Canadian Hearing Society. This debate is fully accessible because it is organized by people who see through that lens of ability. I know there will be future debates you will be attending that most likely will not be accessible, and I'm wondering if you would be willing to make a commitment to attend future debates if accessibility is fully there for all Torontonians to participate in. Can I make sure I understand the question? Are you saying they should boycott any debates that are not accessible? I'm not saying boycott. I'm saying they can make an effort to ensure that the organizers of future debates are putting in place accessibility, such as interpreting, captioning, making sure that the venue is fully accessible, and so on. And My then, hunch is they're all going to say yes to that. Yeah, of course. But in the place. if you want to make it a little harsher on them, uh, David Lepofsky was on the agenda not too uh, last week, in which he said, he put the call out, he said, candidates in the provincial election ought not to participate in all candidates' debates if getting to those debates is impossible for people with disabilities. So I, I'm going to take your gentle question and I'm going to rough it up a bit and say, would you commit to not attending an all-candidates debate if people couldn't get to it? Olivia Chow. I will if the rest of them commit to it. Let's do it together. Just say yes. Yeah, we, know we need to work together to make sure that people can come to no, the No, no, no. Why not? Why not? Let's not go to any negative, not accessible. Let's go in. If we boycott, then that means that everyone is denied. What we need to do is make sure they're accessible so that everyone can go. I think it's fair for us to insist with the organizers and uh, yes. to raise the issue with every organizer to say that it's our strong request that the following, yes. could you please We're make sure. Do it. I think, I, I, well, I think you'll find the vast, I'm sorry, not speak for everyone, but I think you'll find the vast majority of people want it to happen because after all, they want you to attend just like you want more people to be uh, published. To, to know what's going on here. So I think it'll get people hearts in the right direction and doing what we want to do. John Tory? Can I just concur, and I think the approach is perhaps more so taken by David and Karen, but I think we, we generally agree on this. When I had a debate in 2007, the election there in my local riding, I showed up the debate not knowing until somebody told me afterwards that there was like 12 steps up in the police I collegiate on each side of the building and no place anybody could get in who was otherwise. I went to the Toronto School for the Deaf last week as part of a school fair, and I realized how difficult it was because I didn't do any sign language. They taught me three while I was standing there, but otherwise it was very difficult for us to communicate. I was writing notes on a piece of paper. So I get that, and I think the way to do it is the way that David, I think, just best articulated in a moment ago, which is if we have a sufficient advanced knowledge of where these things are, to say, look, we, we, we insist that you make available a reasonable accommodation um, you know, to ensure people can have access to these debates. Mm -hmm. Want to come back on that? Um, you know, we could try. We will try. We will do it. We'll ask them. But there will be ones that won't do it. If we can just make a commitment, we just don't show up together. Like, now, but mind you, you know. yeah, but when we know, know, when we, well, you know, you can ask them. If they say they're going to do it, they're going to do it. You honor it, right? If they said, oh, but if maybe not, then, you know, I, um, we can certainly discuss it between the campaigns, but uh, it's a very, very good question. Bare minimum, we'll raise it. I, I mean, prefer to yes. see it if they actually don't do it, we don't show. You know, we should have to. I mean, we used to think of all that, and it is a common checklist that all these people have to sort of fill out for us when they ask us all to come. And it includes all bunch of different things, but it includes some questions to do with accessibility for disabled people, so we'll know. Because right now, we do sort of just know what time to show up and where to show up. And sometimes you know the building, sometimes you don't. But I think a checklist like that on a number of things would be very helpful. I asked because in the last provincial election, in the riding of Parkdale High Park, apparently there was to be an all-candidates debate. It was at a place that was inaccessible. And I think the NDP candidate, Sherry DeNovo, said, if you don't make it accessible, I'm not showing up. So they put it outside in the parking lot. And everybody could then attend. Ended up working out. Okay, next question.